name is Amedi Mara, process engineer. I'm uh, Michael Mullaney, I'm the PSM coordinator for the BMC facility. I'm Caitlin Drew, I'm the technical service engineer at BMC. And I'm Jason Zhao, I'm the maintenance engineer for a liquid marriage truck bike. Have you guys always been interested in STEM careers? I wanted to be a vet for a really long time. I'm not so good with the illness and surgeries. Mm. I'm very good at math and science. Growing up, I've always had a fascination with math and science. I just like how engineering, you don't need to know everything. You just got to know how <clears throat> to follow the process to get to the solutions. One of the biggest things I've noticed is the people. Everyone's super friendly and you can go up to anyone basically and ask whatever question. I think the culture at Ineos is one of the best parts of it. Everybody is very cooperative and Definitely. it's just a, a very you know, good environment to work in. I wholeheartedly agree. I feel like Enios has an open door policy and we have a lot of extracurricular activities. I really like appreciate how much the company invests into us as people. I do appreciate how Enios um, builds you up as an individual. I was surprised to see how focused we are on circular economy and recyclability. I feel like a lot of companies just kind of try to check that box, and especially working in technical services and product development, I see that on a day-to-day -day basis, how much we actually care about making sure our products are, you know, good for this earth. I get a lot of questions, especially working in the technical services and product development group, about how could you work at a company that makes plastics? I think a lot of people have a misconception about the plastics industry, like you make water bottles, you drink a water bottle, you throw it away. I don't think people understand, like, how much Enios is doing to reduce our carbon footprint how much of a carbon footprint it takes just to make paper and, and how recyclable our products are. We have a lot of things that we can offer that not a lot of chemical companies can say they do. We see it also on the site as well in terms of the things we're working on. I mean, there's different initiatives all over the site between, like you said, mechanical, advanced recycling, and then things like Operation Clean Sweep. So um, what exactly is Operation Clean Sweep? It is the initiative to make sure that no plastic pellet or just overall plastic leaves the facility and gets into the wastewaters. I think every site has its own group leading that with different projects and they're cooperating across sites to ensure that each county uh, and each community can feel comfortable with the fact that the companies around them are you know, promoting the environment and keeping things contained. One thing that we really heavily focus on and great, put great importance on is sustainability and safety and community outreach and things like that. There's more initiatives than that too. Yeah. I know we're pushing to make our carbon footprint zero. Yeah. yeah. You know? Net zero by 2050, right? <laughs> by 2050. <laughs> Jason, what do you think could be done to bring more people to our industry and to Enios specifically? I think one of the biggest facets that Enios has is the company culture. Enios does have a very unique and very encouraging work environment. Generally, you feel that Enios actually puts the money where their mouth is. They have a lot of outreach programs, schools um, promote STEM career fairs, they help build gyms to promote their healthy living, which is a core principle at Enios. Also, the super unique things that Enios offers, no other company has, especially the, the Namibia program. Oh yeah, I've never heard of anyone who has an initiative like that. Yeah. <laughs> you can't really yeah, see that outside of a big, you know, privately owned company. So the Namibia program is actually based off of a challenge that Sir Jim did. And it's all based off of running, hiking, and biking through the Namib Desert, which is the oldest mm -hmm. desert in the world. It was an experience of a lifetime. It's uh, incredibly difficult physically, but it seemed like the mental aspect of it was more of a challenge than the physical things. Even though you're doing all of these you know, crazy things like a marathon and uh, deep sand mountain bike riding and climbing the Brandberg Mountain, which, like you said, is the tallest mountain in Namibia, wow. while carrying your own uh, equipment up and down the mountain. and All of that was very difficult physically, obviously, but the, the mental challenge was, to me, even harder. And you do it as a group and w as well, right? So you just feel yeah. all that much more <laughs> of a team when you come back. It's not a race, it's really mm -hmm. all about the journey. Yeah. I think that ties in too, into like the big picture that Enios pushes is like, you've seen how Sir Jim has brought Enios up from what some would say is nothing and how big the company is now with all these different groups and all these different subsidiaries and then all the other initiatives between all the sports and things like that. So it's like just getting the name out there is one big part of like getting people to know who Enios is. What are you guys looking forward to most in the future at Enios? I think for me, there's just a lot of opportunity to grow as a person and then within the company as well. Um, between the circular economy initiatives, 
the net zero carbon initiatives. One thing I really appreciate about Ineos is how um, self-driven your career progression is and how things are, or job openings are just posted internally. You can kind of uh, apply to whatever you're interested in and there's not like set rotation structures for uh, new hires as they come in. You don't have to have a background in whatever you're interested in. I've heard people who graduated by mechanical engineering by nature go into process technology and work on uh, process, which is typically a chemical background. Yeah. They don't consider it a automatic disqualification just because you don't have the credentials, but so long as you show the effort, you put in the time, and you make a good case, then they'll definitely consider you. Um, I think I'm most interested in seeing what Ineos has to offer in terms of circular economy in the future. I'm really interested to see us get to net zero and how mm -hmm. we're able to use post-consumer recycling, advanced recycling, and really see how plastic evolves. I feel like Ineos is gonna be a company that really survives that. Yeah. There are companies that aren't working very hard on these kind of initiatives, and mm -hmm. I don't think they're gonna be able to do as well in the future when everything is more environmentally friendly. Thank you for your time, everybody. It was great talking about all this with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.